expect more of the same today. She's strong. She has good footwork. She finishes around the basket. The offense needs to go through her early and often today. Main Grant game one, a 21-point victory yesterday. The Bearcats have won four straight games in the second leg of these back-to-backs, and we're off and rolling from the event center. Tim Hyman, Dunk Walsh, ESPN Plus, and a look at Binghamton starters presented by Gallagher Baker. Danae Bowman goes to work. Same starting five, Beth Ann Shapiro or used yesterday. A starting five that was part of a, a strong first half for Binghamton. Wasco front and center. No good on her first shot. And you see Maine immediately goes down and tries to double-team Wasco. Make her give it up. Moore guarding Blanca Milan down low. Wasco eyeing for the rebound, and it careens to Cassidy Roberts. The Bearcats' sophomores played about 25 minutes per game. Had a rough day yesterday with five turnovers against one assist. Wasco drives in. Binghamton draws first blood. Now, that's what you're going to need to see. Wasco has to touch the ball almost every trip down the floor, and she's got to take it to the basket. Wasco's been quieted recently. Just 13 points total in her last three games. They need some production out of her if they want to take down the top team in the conference. Main winners have six in a row. Overall, 11-1 and one record. Now, Carroll's a pretty good defender down there, but the size and the strength of Wasco has to come into play today. Blanca Mullah, fouled by Berna Berni's daughter. And that'll send the leading score in the conference to the free throw line. 23 points per game. Not just the best in America East, it's the 15th best rate in the country. Well, she scores in a lot of different ways. She hits the jumper, she drives it hard, she gets to the line quite often, she got offensive rebounds, so you add all those up and she averages a lot of points. Yeah, you know you're having a good season when a 20-point effort actually reduces your scoring <laughs> average, which yeah. it did yesterday. Yeah, and see now it allows the made free throwers allowed Maine to get into their pressure, forced the turnover right there. It seemed like it snowballed yesterday, Doug. Just as soon as Maine found their defensive groove, Binghamton started to come apart. Yeah, the, the, the pressure got to them. That You know, you, you, you wear them down, you wear them down, you wear them down, and sooner or later you made some mental mistakes, and bingo, an 8-0 run, and well, it turned out to be a 14-0 run to start the second half yesterday. Milan slipped through two Bearcats but missed the layup. Beth Ann Shapiro Ord remarked she wasn't sure what team took the floor wearing the Bearcat jerseys in the second half yesterday. Right back to Wasco. Follows her miss. Had it blocked. Recovered by Kelly Fogarty. Now she just has to make sure Wasco doesn't get frustrated now. They're double teaming her. She had the ball three times now and only converted once, so she can't get frustrated. They still got to keep going to her and going to her, going to her. The top offense in America East goes to work. 67 points per game this season. Milan tacks on it two more. Boy, I was watching that battle inside. She had Haley Moore on her and she just kept working, 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 and finally got posted up, and they found her. Wasco battling Carroll, looking for position down low. Here's Bowman. Now Roberts, catch and release. Good. Boy, eerily similar to yesterday's game. She knocked down a jumper just like that for almost from that same spot. Binghamton would love to find their stroke from deep. They had only two three-pointers yesterday. Well, they need to shoot a better percentage because they got some good looks yesterday, but they didn't convert. They need to shoot a better percentage today. How about Dorsar getting in there? Yesterday crossed off a milestone, the 22nd player in Black Bear history to score 1,000 points in her career. Took her a little bit yesterday, this time a quick bucket today. Yeah, I like the fact that yesterday she she didn't get it until the third quarter, but she let the game, because she didn't force it, she let the game come to her. and that, that was, I'm sure it was in the back of her mind, that milestone, but... She didn't force the issue. Moore, good. Back to back. Knocked down from deep for Binghamton. Wait. Uh, that's the kind of start Haley Moore needed because she missed her first two yesterday. And that making that one kind of makes you feel a little bit more comfortable today. Beth Ann Shapiro or loved Moore's defense yesterday. But she went 0 of 6 from deep. Carroll, no. Karam, grabbed by Simon. New life for Maine. As they look for their 10th road win of the season. Milan offline. Wasco fumbled it out of bounds. Yeah, this main Black Bear squad is 
They've been road warriors led by Amy Vasho, a main great in her playing career, Athletics Hall of Famer already. And now in her fourth season guiding this club, a club that has relied heavily on the upperclassmen. Yeah, the, all the upperclassmen came in about the same time she did when she took over for Richard Barron. And they're all on the same page together for the last four or five years. Yeah, pretty well-oiled machine is this main offense as Milan hits. Even at eight, four minutes deep, they look for Claire Traker. Roberts, a good look. Just offline. Grabbed by Fawny Wadley. Good ball movement from the Bearcats to set up Roberts. Here comes Wadling, a quick strike. Boy, credit Wadling for running the floor right down the middle of the floor. And you know that Dorsar is going to find anybody who's open. That's two assists for Dorsar, who came in third all time at assists in main history. Moore, too strong from way out there. And this one belongs to Maine. You know, no, you notice, Tim, that Binghamton is shooting a little earlier today. They were not as running as much time off the clock as they did yesterday, but they got some good looks, and I think that's to develop a little confidence in them if they see a couple go down. Beth Ann Shapiro Ord said because of the turnovers yesterday, they just never found their offensive rhythm in the second half. For a Bearcat team that shot just 32% yesterday. They were within one to start the second. But a 16-0 run by the Black Bears turned the game on its head. Kelly Fogarty, three to shoot. Waddling, long range two. Bowman's right there. Well, you know, the earlier shots by Binghamton also gets you, you know, if you go late in the clock and you have to shoot one, you feel a little pressure on you. Well, here's Simon adding to her steal total. Feeding Fogarty. Bowman blocked it away. A good recovery by Bowman. It remains main ball. Back and forth to start the first here in Vestal. You by visiting HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, the official tire of the America East Conference. Right on our string. The main Black Bears lead the Binghamton Bearcats by two. Four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Blanca Milan goes to work offline, and this one will remain with the Black Bears. Maine extended their advantage in this all-time series with their victory yesterday. They've now claimed five of the last six meetings. Dorsar with an open route to the rim. Missed it off the backboard. Grabbed by Wadley. Unfortunate for Binghamton, they played pretty good defense there, and the ball just came off too long. Got them a second opportunity, and they knocked down a three. They make you pay, Maine does. And then the make allows them to set up that pressure in the backcourt. Binghamton breaks it. Blanca Milan already nine points of Maine 13 to get us started. Now it's Bowman. Binghamton's leading score, 13 points per game, feeding more. Wasco on the bench. Bowman, long range two, left it short late in the clock. Roberts finds Elena Delicato. Moore. Delicato again. So a couple of chances of this possession for the Bearcats. Binghamton hauled in 14 offensive rebounds yesterday. Did not save them, though, from a 21-point defeat. Bowman, tough leaner, won't go. Pinballs around again. Bowman, another chance. Well, if you get this many opportunities, you're going to have to make them pay. Maine did it down there to them uh, on that end, so Binghamton has to answer right back. So Moore covered by Alba O'Roy's five to shoot. Who wants to take it? Traeger. Delicato had it, lost it, and then a foul on the floor. Yeah, they're going to get waddling, I think, for holding... Delicato on that rebound. So this will be the fourth or fifth try of this possession that Binghamton's going to have. They must capitalize on it, though. So the Sweden native will take a seat after her first foul. Again, 20 seconds back on the clock. Moore got a piece of it, rather. Sark got a piece of it. And uh, Anna Strong will give it another chance. This might be the longest possession in college basketball <laughs> history. <laughs> Bowman. No. Delicato 
Foul called for the foul. So Elena Delicato called for the foul. And a lengthy possession, a lengthy trip down the floor. Ends with no pay dirt for Man, the Bearcats. You can't come up empty on that if you're Binghamton. It's, almost, it's demoralizing. He had that many chances. So no one could stuff at home. And now Maine's offense goes back to work. They've been running through Milan. Now they'll find Saar. Lost the handle and now behind the play. They get to with numbers if they want it. And then Milan picks up a foul. Well, Binghamton is going to run when they have the opportunity. They had the opportunity there. So Milan's foul might not have been a bad thing there because Binghamton had some numbers. Yeah, and Saar was well behind the play anyway. A little bit more up-tempo offense stuff today from the Bearcats. Well, yeah, I, and, and I think it's designed to, so they don't go late in the clock and there's pressure on them on that last, you know, the last six, seven seconds. you gotta you got to make it. So if you shoot earlier in the clock, you see a couple go down, you feel a little bit more confident. Maine had it tipped out of play. Off the Bearcat. <laughs> Cassidy Roberts voicing her viewpoint from the Bearcat bench to no avail. Well, some of the main people started to turn around and go the other way, too. I don't think they thought it was off them either. <laughs> Carol using the body. That's good. Boy, she's great at that under and up. She did that a couple times yesterday, too. She uses the rim to protect herself very well. That's nine unanswered, capped by Carroll's bucket. Black Bears have a seven-point edge and a second straight turnover in as many possessions. Well, they have quick hands. Maine has quick hands when you put that ball down. Milan draws the foul out of Traker. Now, you don't amass the best turnover margin in the conference by accident. Maine a plus six coming into play today. 17th best in the country. Well, they move their feet well. They anticipate well. They get their hands in. They get a lot of deflections. Uh, Simon got a load of deflections yesterday. They all do, but anticipation is the key on the defensive end for them. Yeah, they stuffed out plenty of Bearcat passes. Picked them off. Here's O'Roy's high arcing three is good. And the freshman from Spain makes it a 12-0 main run. Now this gets them into their style too. The pressure full court, use a lot of people, a tough defense. Bowman, no, grabbed by Wadley. Well, Maine has set the tone in the first half this season. They've outscored opponents a plus 10 in first halves this year. That's why Amy Vashon called yesterday's first half so uncharacteristic by then. Bowman swats one away by Carroll, and this will be Bearcat ball. A far different start for the Black Bears today compared to yesterday. Well, that was by design for Binghamton. They wanted to slow the pace down. They took an awful lot of time off each possession, limiting Maine's possessions. You know, they only got 22 shots in the first half. So Coach Vachon says, well, let's, let's create up-tempo early this game. Don't let them create the tempo. We'll create the tempo. Binghamton is in the midst of a six-minute drought. They led 8-6. to six. Now trail by 10. Wasco ends it. Well, Wasco back on the floor now. It's got to go into her as many times as they can get it to her. Maine can hold it for the final shot. I'm sure it's going to end up in Milan's hands at some point. 22 cycling through the paint right now. Two seconds into the arms of O'Roy's. Banged it home at the buzzer. <laughs> Alba O'Roy's, the freshman, caps a 20-point first quarter for the main Black Bears. Where they like to play. When they're playing faster, they, uh, they get better shots and they make more shots. You see that they were trying to run something there for Milan at the end, but she recognized that they were getting overplay, and O'Roy stepped in and took over and got one at the buzzer. Milan led the charge. Nine points in the first quarter. Black Bears by 10. We start the second. Tim Hyman, Doug Walsh, ESPN Plus. The main Black Bears look for a seventh straight win. Their third straight weekend sweep. Binghamton bids to win game two of these back-to-backs for the fifth straight weekend. And the Black Bears open up with an empty possession. 
Yeah. Good, good defense down low, forced the kick back outside, and she stepped down the line. Into no man's land, snagged by Carroll. Wasco ties it up. The Bearcats will get it, but they burn the arrow. That main pressure really forces some flustered passes. Yeah, they get you make uh, bad decisions, ill-advised passes. They get you out of sorts, that's for sure. Binghamton was 4 of 15 from the floor in the first quarter. It's not been a good shooting weekend for them. They shot just 32% yesterday. Beardy's daughter banged it home. Yeah. Good look by Cassidy Roberts. As soon as she got it, it was like a hot potato. She got rid of it. And Simon drives right around Bernie's daughter and lays it in. Wait, Bernie's daughter respecting her for the jumper, and then she put it on the floor and went right by her. Simon shooting nearly 60% the last four games. Close range shots like that have certainly helped. She's put Maine back on top by 10. Well, her percentage went up from yesterday because she made an awful lot of layups off steals. Five steals yesterday. Wasco, a three-pointer offline. More in there. What a role reversal that is. Milan with Bowman. Dug free yeah. by Wasco. And then picked off. And then Milan avoids Bernie's daughter. And here come the Black Bears. Saar, three-point shooter, record holder, adds to her total. My good patience. She saw the defender coming at her. Pump fake. Gathered, let it go, let her go by, and then calmly knocked it down. 221 three-pointers in her career, more than any other Black Bear in school history. This will stay with Binghamton. She just set the record, passing Cindy Blodgett last weekend with her three-pointers against U Albany, part of a main sweep. 13-point main Black Bear lead. That's Haley Moore. Binghamton, sharpshooter from deep. Right back to Wasco with the left hand. No. Pulled down by Simon. On the move, Milan. And she's into double figures in a hurry. Well, Miginton wants to feature the post, but they want to go now to Bernie's daughter because she's got Simon on her. It's a better matchup than the Wasco Carroll matchup. So you see them trying to post up Bernie's daughter. Wasco a three. Bernie's daughter on the putback. Yeah, she's having she's having more of her way down low with Simon than Wasco is with Carroll. So credit Binghamton for finding that. Simon from straight away can't get the bounce. Right back inside. Barney's daughter now out. Wasco three ball. Well, no. she's pulling Carroll away from the basket now. That's three. Attempts from beyond the arc in the last four possessions. So if she can make those down, she can create some problems for men. Fifth three-pointer for Wasco this season. So the Bearcats changing on the fly for their offense. Can they stop this main offense? Simon, mid-range. No, and Wasco is right there on the boards. Binghamton a plus one on the glass today. Bowman speeding and hits. Yeah. Timeout, Maine. So Binghamton makes a defensive stand. They make some tweaks to their offense. Because Cassidy got it into her immediately, and then they moved Wasco out to face the basket, bringing Carroll out to play defense further from the basket. So if Wasco can knock down another three or so, and you feature Bernie's daughter inside, that might be the ticket. Main a rebuttal. That ends the stretch of eight unanswered for the Bearcats. So Fawny Wadley with her second from the floor. Back to a 10-point main lead. Black Bears led by Blanca Milan, who has 11 points. Well, credit Coach Vachon for settling her team down, and they ran that play, that back screen out of the timeout, calling them down. Roberts, no. There it is, daughter, the follow. That's eight offensive rebounds for Binghamton. Well, you've got to capitalize on them. If you get that many offensive rebounds against this team, you've got to make them pay. Six to shoot. Barity's daughter against Kahalin. That's good. 
Yeah, they can't handle Barney's daughter, so her size is creating problems for Maine. Blanca Milan forces the issue at the other end. And Barney's daughter, 6'3", a transfer from Arizona. Had just six points in 19 minutes yesterday, but you can foresee a more active role today. Well, you see, she knew the clock was running down, and she knew she couldn't afford to pass it, so she drove it into the lane, and a nice little spin move there. Claire Traeger was called for her second foul. Binghamton loves the energy she brings onto the floor, so she'll be playing with two from here on out. Milan hits them both. 13 points for Maine's leading score, and here comes Danae Bowman back on the floor as Traeger takes a seat. And here comes that main pressure thing. It's in two quick passes to break it. Well, when you press, you're giving up the middle of the floor. The ball has to, sooner or later, the ball has to go into the middle floor. Good job by Binghamton finding Bowman in the middle of the floor to break that press, that possession. Wasco again from deep. Karam grabbed by Wadley. So Barony's daughter down low, Wasco on the perimeter. But Binghamton can't convert and still trail by 10. There's Maeve Carroll. What a first half she had yesterday with 10 points in the opening 20 minutes. They'll kick it to Kahalen. Slipping behind, Carroll misses. Grand by Bowman. Well, credit the help there by Barony's daughter. Came over from the weak side. Startled. Main in the post. Carroll had such a great touch yesterday with six of nine from the floor. Now Bowman, runner, won't go down. Grabbed by Dorsar. Here comes Main. Kahalen a three. Grabbed by Roberts. Kahalen still looking for her first bucket since getting on the floor. Had missed the first 11 games of the season before playing yesterday. Well, Binghamton's okay with this pace thus far. It's a it's a main pace, but Binghamton hanging in there. Back to the post. Barony's daughter, no, and Wadling picked it off in front of Dorsar. Now you're getting the looks that you want. If you're Binghamton, you're just not converting. Turn and shoot from Carroll offline. Haley Moore's got the rebound. Can the Bearcats jumpstart their offense? Shooting 33% from the floor. Binghamton a tick under 40% this season. Barney's daughter has the touch. She's got eight points. She looks like she's more aggressive today. I think Coach Shapiro Ward said, hey, let, we need you to score, so take the ball to the basket. She's doing a real good job of that. An active role in this second quarter back to an eight-point game. Maine is led by as many as 15. Waddling beneath, reverse. No, Moore swaps in, and it's Bearcat ball. So the extra effort from Haley Moore. And the Bearcats will get possession. They have to, if they could just convert a few more of these good looks, they'd be right in it. Plenty of opportunities for Barony's daughter and Wasco. They have taken 15 combined shots of Binghamton's 28 as a team. Trailing by eight, 230 left, first half. Oh, now they got two in the high, the, the high and the low post between uh, Wasco and Bernie's daughter. They're trying to jockey for position. A tough start for Bowman, now one of seven. Saar driving, kicking. Bowman picked it off, and Moore's there to recover. Second steal for Binghamton. Just the third turnover for the Black Bears, who had 12 turnovers in the first half. Jamie Vashon put it. Yesterday, Maine had more turnovers than buckets at halftime. That changed in a pretty significant way in the second half. Well, the shortened uh, game only allowed Maine 22 shots in the first half. Barney's daughter buries a three. You know, if you're Binghamton now, you've played a pretty solid half, and they he withstood that one run of Maine's, and if you could keep this at four, five, or six going into the locker room, you'd be happy. Golden touch for Barony's daughter, who has 11 points. And Binghamton has carved off 10 from a, what was a 15-point deficit. 
Bearcat ball. Elroy's turned it over on the baseline as she got trapped. Well, credit the Nate Bowman there for she, she's denying the ball to get, getting into Milan's hands, and, and, and she is really having to work for everything after she started off real strong. But Bowman's doing a good job on her, and it's kind of taking Maine out of the sink of their sink on offense. Last minute, second quarter. Inside to Wasco. Draws the double. Bernie's daughter. Bang! Back to back for Bernie's daughter. Boy, Cassidy Roberts passed up a good one for a better one, and Bernie's daughter knocks it down. Eight unanswered from Binghamton. Wasco battling Carroll. Kick out. Here's Simon at three. Good. And Simon with the rebuttal. Boy, the help went a little too far and left Simon wide open. Pretty good defensive possession there, but a little lapse at the end cost them. Final shot. First half. Bowman against two. No, a no foul as Bowman and the Bearcats maintain possession. Good defense from the Black Bears. Well, there's a lot of time here. 1.8 is time. You can, you can even take a dribble when you receive it, but look for something to come in the, into play right at about the post or maybe something for more on the perimeter to get a quick one up. Into Bernie's daughter. Has to hoist it up. Offline. It was all about the threes to close the first half. Berta, Bernie's daughter, caps off a strong opening 20 minutes. Back to 12 points, four boards, three assists. Part of you, Albany's win. Stony Brook in their first meeting in almost seven years with NJIT collected a win at home. And Ann Simon, we, we've talked a lot about her already. A great effort by Simon yesterday, and she gets us started in the second half today. Black Bears by five. An early foul on Berna Bernie's daughter. That's her second. As we settle in. Tim Iman, Doug Walsh. And the Bearcats hoping to get out of the locker room with some good rhythm. Milan, 13 points in the first half. Off the mark with her first shot in the second half. Saw her on the inside of the arc. No good. Rebound, Wasco. Boy, that out of bounds play that Main runs is pretty simple, but it, it's pretty effective. Uh, Milan just tries to hustle and beat her man, her person to the basket, and she does a nice job doing it. Keep your eyes on Barony's daughter, number 10, high post, battling Ann Simon. Can the Bearcats get it down low? Barony's daughter gets it and puts it home. Boy, right on cue, Tim Hyman. She posts up well, she seals well, gets the target hand up. I mean, Beth Ann Shapiro or told us what they wanted to do today, so. <laughs> Three ball good. <laughs> Jerry Fogarty drills it. You're a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> Fogarty missed her first 16 three-pointers this season, but has since shot 46% in the last seven games. Now Verdi's daughter. No, too strong. Carroll the box out against Wasco. Now oh, she's feeling it, so she takes that long range. No good from Fogarty this time. Wasco lets it bounce out of play. Well, the Black Bears, they are a dangerous team from deep. They didn't see it yesterday. They were just 3 of 11. But they not only shoot the best mark in the conference, they hit about 8 per game, the best rate in the conference. Now, they also do a lot of that, turning it over, but then Milan picks up another foul, both of which have been on the other end of the floor. Uh, you see, again, Ann Simon got her hand in there to poke that one away almost caused the turnover actually she did cause the turnover but Maine gave it right back she gets her hands on a lot of balls Simon does Simon with some great defensive pressure good for about two steals per game fourth in the conference and we're going to reach in foul yeah, you get Sar a little bit too much arm bar on Bowman second one for Maine 
And there is Cassidy Roberts. Who has stepped up nicely. Two and a half assists per game. They'll work it to Barney's daughter, drawing the double. Barney's daughter keeps up her impressive role. Well, you see an exasperated look by Ann Simon. She did everything she could to keep Barney's daughter out of the paint, but to no avail. How about Carol slipping behind two for her second bucket? Well, she plays bigger than she is. She posts up real well for her size. Barney's daughter there to clean it up. Flosco waited and then had it poked away. Got sworn by Black Bears. Milan in transition. Rebound, Barney's daughter. Unfortunate for Binghamton at that time. They had a run out. They had an easy one, and Wasco just couldn't handle it. A six-point game. Now Bowman. Can she shake off a rough first half? At least offensively. More three. Bowman skies. Pulled it down. A foul on the floor. I think to get Fogarty for holding Bowman, trying to keep her down. That's the third team foul, Tim. So if they can get to the foul line, Binghamton, that'll help. Maybe. Binghamton did not take a single free throw in that yeah. first half, as you noted, Doug. Yeah. They need to make some foul shots. You got to make eight or ten. That's the fourth out. They're going to get another one. So that's the fourth team foul, and there's seven plus minutes to go in this quarter. So the next one, they'll be bonus. Robert shaking out that left hand. She fell hard to the floor, attempting to sky for that high pass. Stays in and runs point. Bowman into the lane, banged it home. So back to a two possession game as Dorsar gets it started. The linchpin of this main offense down to Milan. Found by Bernie's daughter. That's number three on the Bearcat freshman. Now, unfortunate for Bernie's daughter because Bowman did a real good job on Milan trying to keep her from getting the ball. And when she did get the ball, she turned and there was Bernie's daughter, but she was ticketed for the foul. Bowman making Milan work for everything she's getting. Yeah, Milan had. 11 points in a hurry in the first half, but then stayed parked at that level for most of the second quarter. Yeah, most of it due to the defense by Tene Bowman. So they're going to get Claire Traeger back on the floor. Traeger had two fouls in the first half and took a seat. Barony's daughter will sit with three fouls. Yeah, you have to be careful here now, Tim. I know she's got three fouls, but she's been pretty steady on the offensive end and you know, even with those three fouls, she may not be able to sit too long. Far and away, Binghamton's leader with 18 points today. Bowman stripped. Falls on top of it. This one will stay with Binghamton. Boy, Sar with quick hands there. You know, young players, you have, you have to reach in before it gets up high. She gets her hand down there on the way up. Poked that away. Super defense by Sar. Can Binghamton's offense find their rhythm without their leading scorer at Bernie's daughter? Not that time, and Wadling's there on the loose ball. And then nearly traveled. Main with a good defensive possession there. Took the shot clock all the way down. Roberts had to force up a, a hurried one. Carroll, not shy about driving in and hitting. Well, she can have her way on the offensive end down there low. Let's see if they try to post up Wasco now with Barney's daughter on the bench. Wasco attempting to establish position against Carroll down low. They'll swing it to Roberts. A line drive too is good. Well, she's got a quick release. Gets it and gets rid of it in a hurry. Five points for Roberts. Main's lead sits at six. They've led since the midway point of the first quarter, and they'll add to their lead. And Simon, her second from deep today. Uh, too much room. You can't give her that much room. Roberts went a little too far. Reaching foul on Milan. That's number three on Blanca Milan. And that'll put the Bearcats on the free throw line now that they're in the bonus. Now Roberts is going to go to the line. 
part, and that's going to go on Sar. Second and one on Sar. So scratch that from Milan. And it will be Cassidy Roberts taking the first free throws for Binghamton this afternoon. Well, just what you wanted if you're Binghamton with five plus minutes to go in the third, you're in the bonus. But when you're down six, eight, ten points, you've got to convert many foul shots. Missed them both, and here come the Black Bears. Midpoint, third quarter. The Bearcats trail by nine. Milan slipping behind Bowman. No, batted off the backboard. And pinballs to Simon. And see if May can take advantage of the extra possession. Carroll in. Good. Carroll carves into the paint and extends the lead to double digits. Oh, she's almost unstoppable down there. Even undersized as well, but. So Carroll steps up a couple of buckets in this third quarter. And the Black Bear lead edges back out to 12 points per game. All-America East second team. And Amy Vashon pointed to a game in November of that season against Arizona State up against Pac-12 forward, 6'4 and taller. She had success, and it, it gave her confidence knowing that she could succeed at this level. Well, I, I can play against anybody, yep. Really gave her some gumption to drive in and take on some bigger players. You know, if you get a, a shot blocked here and there, it's no big deal, but she's good at protecting. Doug Beth and Shapiro Ord calls upon Catherine Kirkwood. We'll see what she can deliver. Two points right out of the gate. Well, it's got to be, the game has to be played inside if you're Binghamton. Now with Bernie's daughter on the bench, you're going to have to go, and Wasco on the bench too. You're going to have to go down to Kirkwood. Bernie's daughter has three fouls. That's why she's on the bench despite scoring 18 points today. Milan offline, Kirkwood the rebound. I, I can't say enough about the job Bowman's doing on. He's taking Milan out of sorts. Roberts has it, glance off the rim. Block of Milan runs down the rebound. Rebound's even, 23 apiece. Inside, Fawny Wadley. Looked for the back cutter, but instead turned it over. Bowman gets it to go. Now, well, good defense by Traeger. Gets Binghamton out in transition. You can run when you play good, solid defense. You had kind of had numbers there, and Maybe that'll get Bowman off the offensive side. Now it's Saar with the drive. Gets it to go. Well, you see her. She's not the biggest person in the world, but she uses that body to fend off the defender, leaning in the whole way in along the baseline. Saar adding now to her career total, sitting above 1,000 points. Bowman's shooting difficulties, creeping back up. Three of ten from the floor today. Carroll against Moore. The mismatch, and that's good. Now you got to credit Sar for recognizing that mismatch immediately across the timeline. Got it down low to Carroll, and she can't be stopped. The lead back to 11, but Bowman carves into it. Moore. Called for the blocking foul as she never established defensive positioning. First foul on Haley Moore. You see, Coach Vachon now told them to let's let's keep that pace going, let's keep running, let's keep pushing. Maine already at 52 points with still a quarter plus to go. They're good for. Almost 67 points per game. Kirkwood stuffs Carroll. Second effort stuffed again. Wow, excellent job by Kirkwood. Good sub by the coach. The basket and two great defensive plays. Kirkwood chomping at the bit to get on the floor. Gets on the floor in the third quarter and immediately making a difference. Well, had a great game the other day against UMass Lowell last week. And look at this. She holds her ground. Good block. And then Carroll thinks she has her beat on the second one. And Kirkwood doesn't give up on the play and gets her from behind. Kirkwood had that 13-point effort versus UMass Lowell last weekend that you mentioned. 
after making her debut with the Bearcats back on January 2nd. A transfer from USC Upstate. Bowman's turn at the free throw line. And Binghamton has missed all four free throw attempts. Well, you hate to keep harping on it, but when you're down, you've got to make fouls. Carroll Kirkwood, this time, no good. So she got the shot off, just couldn't get it to full. Yeah, but Kirkwood made her change that shot. Kirkwood doing a real good job on Carroll down low. Bowman against the freshman O'Ruhr. Bowman will take it and hit it. Smooth looking shot from the Bearcat sophomore. Yeah, she's made three jumpers and a little, she likes to take it to the basket, but she's made three jumpers in a row there. Back to a seven point game. And Carroll travels. Well, there's still a, a minute plus to go, but much better third quarter by Binghamton today. Just can't have a, a lapse now in these last two or three possessions. Maine just an 18-14 advantage in this third quarter. As you get a look at Amy Vashon, attempting to get her club to their seventh consecutive win. And their defense, just like that, is the reason why. They forced the turnover. We had Traeger handling the ball back there. That's not the one you want to handle him back there. Taylor Wasco onto the floor after a stent down the bench and picks up the foul. Now if you're Binghamton now for these last two possessions, you got to be careful you don't commit a foul because it's going to send Maine into the bonus. Black Bears and Adequate free throw shooting team, third in the conference as a unit. Dorsar gets it back, guarded by Haley Moore. Final 50 seconds of the third quarter. Simon cutting, cut off by Bowman. Saar looking for Wadley against Wasco. Two to shoot, got it off, and hits with the foul. Boy, great defensive effort there by Binghamton. They were a two-man game. They just kept running the two-man game between Waddling and Saar, and then Wasco picks up the bump and the end one. They started that position, Saar and Waddling together on the same side of the floor, and they never left it. They got it. She got it back, Saar, and they just kept working that two-man game until they got what they wanted. A half dozen points from Wadley. Last 30 seconds of the third quarter. Wasco battling Abby Lawrence down low. Lost the feed from Bernie's daughter. Plenty of time for me. Alba Oroy is demanding it up top. Five seconds left in the third. Oroy is trucking through, draws contact, and Maine will shoot free throws. And it's Barney's daughter. Well, Coach Shapiro Ord gambled. Barney's daughter picks up her fourth. So Barney's daughter and her 18 points will take a seat. Now she thinks she's straight up. Now she kind of put the knee out there a little bit. So Alba Oroys will shoot two. A rough sequence for the Bearcats. Now the chance to put one home, maybe make it a seven-point game, but instead watch their leading score collect a fourth foul. Well, they turned it over, and they got a three-point play. And then they commit the foul there at the end. It didn't hurt them, but... The Black Bears stretch their lead out. Senior Maeve Carroll chipping in with two. A nine-point advantage. Doing a good job. She took it upon herself to kind of slow her down since then. Bowman, Verdi's daughter, into double figures. But Verdi's daughter remains on the bench after collecting her fourth foul in the final minute of that third quarter. Here comes Ann Simon speeding in, extending the lead back to double digits. Well, at some point, you're going to have to roll the dice with Bernie's daughter and let her go, but maybe after a minute or two. 
And Simon joins the double-digit club. She has 10. So strong with that first step going to the basket, Simon is. Kirkwood draws the double. Wasco no good for three. Grabbed by Milana, outlet main, Carroll skying for it. And she'll work it back up top. Saar, a dangerous three-point shooter. Wasco and Kirkwood team up. Solid possession by Maine that time. They pushed it. They almost had an easy one. They made the extra pass, got a wide open look for a three, just didn't knock it down, but the way they want to play. And the Bearcats are raising an 11-point deficit, a step in the right direction. Bowman with a dozen. Well, it's really going to have to come on the defensive end for this last quarter for Binghamton. 60 is the magic number for Maine. They, they don't lose when they get to 60. Carroll got some fancy footwork, but just couldn't get it to go. And Simon tips it out of bounds. Binghamton flustered Maine's offense in the first half yesterday. Kept them to 24 points. Can they rekindle that magic for a 10-minute segment today? I think you have to go back to that first half. Yeah, just like you said, maybe that game plan that they had in the first half yesterday might come into play right here in the last eight and a half. Forced Maine into 12 turnovers in the opening 20 minutes yesterday. Fosco, no good. Grab by Maine. Here comes Dorsar. Left hand release. No good, and Wasco corrals the rebound. Seventh board for Wasco, tying with Bowman for the team lead. Binghamton a plus two on the glass today. And they're trying to post up Delicato. Milan gets in there. At the other end, no good. But Milan runs it down. So new life for the Black Bears after the Milan steal started this. Their third steal today, the ninth one this afternoon for the Black Bears. Right around their average for a game this season. Second chance for Milan. Grabbed by Carroll. Only oh, Maine doing a good job following up Milan on her misses. Two extra possessions this trip. Saar, too strong. Another chance, Milan. And now it's Carroll's opportunity. This is reminiscent of the Binghamton possession in the first half. This will this be their end fifth of the floor. <laughs> this will be their fifth shot. Maine now with a dozen offensive rebounds. And Saar converts. Well you, well, you give this team enough opportunities, they're bound to put it home. Well, and that's the difference between winning and losing right there. They took advantage of their offensive rebounds and Binghamton did not. So now Saar into double figures. One of four with 10 points or more. Bowman's got it. Binghamton now facing a 12 point deficit. Bowman, a patient approach and she hits. Yeah, good job, she got the pump fake. Got Milan up in the air, waited for her to clear and then the finish. So Dor Saar with a couple of three pointers, 222 in her main career, rewriting the main history books more than any other Black Bear in women's program history. Wadling working with a half dozen points and a new season best. Wadling has eight. Like Carol set that up. She told her to go post up. She called for it at the high post and Wadling did a nice job sealing down low. Carol got it to her. Wasco fumbled, sliding, grabbed by the freshman Delicato. Strong look for Bowman. Dorsar fighting forward. Main ball. There's that relentless Black Bears defense. There's just not much room to breathe against them. They don't give you an inch. They challenge every shot. They challenge every pass. They challenge. Now you see that's on the, that's the fifth opportunity on that position. Sar makes them pay. As Amy Vashon put it, I don't want to think about life after door Sar. Yeah, she's been with her from the get-go. The senior has been so integral to this team at both ends of the floor. A 12-point main lead. Winners of six in a row. It's Simon. That's good. Well, the freshman, Alba Olroyz, is the heir apparent to, to Sar. And then a 
Mishandle from Claire Traeger will give the Black Bears the ball back. Binghamton hitting the rumble strips, and now Beth Ann Shapiro Ord realizing she'll be out of time. She'll put Bernie's daughter back on the floor. Well, Traeger just got caught leaning. So Bernie's daughter, four fouls, returns to the floor. It's Carroll versus Wasco. And Carroll yet again making herself at home in the paint. It's uncanny how she jockeys for position and gets inside and then she has the confidence to throw it over the big bigger defender Amy Vashon says she just has such a great feel for what she can do with her entire body down low in the paint Yeah, she's got good footwork she finishes with that left hand too I mean she is left-handed but she finishes with both hands Bowman speeding in won't go but free throws the black bear starting to pull away a 16-point lead for Maine as we hit the home stretch. Matches in games where, as she put it, this Black Bears team takes their foot off the gas pedal. We haven't seen a ton of those this weekend. No, and I, I think, again, you go back to that New Hampshire game, and they're never going to take their foot off the gas pedal again for the rest of the year. Bowman, one of two. The Bearcats now one of six from the free throw line this afternoon. A 15-point Black Bear lead. 4.51 to play in the fourth quarter. There's Beth Van Shapiro Ord. Wants to see that her team make those adjustments still from a game-to-game -game basis. Binghamton came out, kept pace with the Black Bears, but bit by bit, the Black Bears have extended their lead. Now 15 points. Door saw from the wing, guarded by Bowman. Release, good. Third from deep for Dorsar. Wow. She knew she was shooting that all along. She just needed to get enough space in between her and Bowman, and she got. She knew exactly how much she needed, got it, and knocked it down. She's having her best shooting season from deep this year, 42%. It's a career-high pace if she can keep it. Interesting, Coach. Rashawn's got Olroy's and Saar on the floor at the same time playing good defense together. How about Olroy's getting in there, but she double dribbled. So the five foot seven freshman, not afraid to get in there and rip a rebound down, but the Bearcats will keep this. Olroy's, I'm sure, open eyes following Dor Saar and soaking up as much knowledge as she can. This yep. season. And I think that's that's why they she push coach Vashon put them in the lineup together there for quite some time. Get a little uh, feel for what it takes at this level. Uh, it might get overshadowed by the outcome, but Barney's daughter, what an outstanding effort she's put forth today. An 18 point output despite battling foul trouble. Milan against Moore, and Milan falls on top of Moore. But thankfully, the Bearcat Jr. helped back to her feet. Yeah, she went down pretty hard. Good thing Milan didn't step on her head there. Now Moore's a gritty player. <laughs> Beth Ann Shapiro or loves her defense. Called and calling out both her performance and Claire Traeger's performance in the first half yesterday as the reason why Binghamton gave the Black Bears such a hard time the first 20 minutes. Now, you know, most wins usually come from defense, you know, and, and strong defense. And the, the defense Binghamton played yesterday in the first half was second to none. They just didn't do it for 40 minutes. 20 point edge for the Black Bears. Poked away, destined for Kirkwood, picked up by Milan. But Barrett's daughter will pick up her fifth and final foul. Well, she was heavily involved, and that put her in the thick of it at both ends of the floor. So Bernie's daughter fouls out after an 18-point push. Well, she did all she could. You know, she she was almost happy to walk off the floor after this. It's, it, it's She's put up the white flag. She did all she could today. So Bernie's daughter leaves it all out there. She'll watch the rest of this from the bench. Maine picked up a 21-point win yesterday, holding the Bearcats to 46 points. Saar, Milan against Bowman, and this one stays with Maine. Bowman, a 
Such a healthy, hard effort to try to contain Blanca Milan. Not an easy task. Not an easy task at all, but she's done a pretty good job the last 48 hours. Milan with help from the screen. No good. Rebound, Lawrence. Three ball. Fogarty, no. Kirkwood's right there. Catherine Kirkwood getting time here in the second half. She's done a pretty good job here today. Posting up, getting a couple of rebounds, blocked a couple shots. I'd be curious to see how she factors in down the stretch, adding to that Wasco Bernie's daughter mix. Yeah. Kirkwood, footwork, rolls home. A chance at a three point play. That was impressive, that little scoop finger roll. <laughs> she knew she had the call and she just flung it up there and it fell. You gotta like that. An impressive show of finesse from the Milwaukee native. Not a banner day for the Bearcats on the free throw line. One of seven as a team. So the Black Bears, barring a huge comeback from Binghamton, will learn their seventh straight win. Looking inside Lawrence, no good. Roberts there to scoop it up. That would be three straight weekend sweeps for Maine, following their split against New Hampshire. And a commanding perch atop the America East standings. Wasco, long two, rebound, Dorsar. And for Binghamton, back to four and eight. And a schedule that's still to be determined. America East will announce updated schedules the next two weekends coming up later today. So there might be some games in the mix for the Bearcats. Here's Wasco. No good. Rebound. And it will be Bearcat ball. Well, one thing's for sure is they're, they're going to play Albany and Vermont at some point. The two teams that are immediately ahead of them in the standings. So they can take care of business themselves, not rely on anybody else for help. And keep in mind that the playoff structure has still yet to be determined. A, a lot of this will depend on how many games teams get in. I think we've learned just how tenuous a schedule can be firsthand. I think is 13 the number, the magic number? If you get to 13, you're eligible for playoffs. To my so. knowledge, that was the number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's Hannah Strawn onto the floor with Matilda Sorich. Maine also gets Olivia Rockwood onto the floor. Saw her for about three minutes yesterday. Rockwood, top corner, guarding Hannah Strawn. Traeger. Kirkwood kept it alive. Second chance for Binghamton. Delicato. Well, that's the free throw line. Now, right now, the Bearcats have two open weekends on their schedule. There was already one by in there, which was built into the schedule to buffer in case of any schedule changes. And there was the other weekend where they were going to play New Hampshire, a, a series we wound up doing here a couple of weekends ago. Oh, you got to be... Uh you got to be ready to adjust. You got to work on the fly here. And, you know, two days before, you got to be able to pick up and go somewhere else that you weren't planning on it. The MVPs this season have been the director of basketball operations. I should say the directors of basketball operations for all the programs across the conference. Athletic trainers have played such a huge role for all programs this year. And it's really taken everybody pitching in. Final minute, fourth quarter. Maine on their way to their 12th win of the season. I, li I like the way Alba Oroy's play. She's got a lot of spunk. She's, she goes in among the, the trees and takes the hits. She's a tough little cookie. Oroy participated in five championships of Spain, as they call it, before joining the Maine Black Bears. And in two of those... Competitions was named the best passer. A Dorsar waiting in the wings, maybe. Here's O'Roy. Up top, Middlestat. No. Lexi Middlestat looking for her first bucket as a black bear. Another chance. She'll opt for Rockwood. Tipped by Sorich. 
One last chance for the Bearcats. Kirkwood. No good. Katie White looking for the rebound. Now Rockwood's chance. Maybe one last for the Black Bears. Caroline Boardman. And now Maine will work it back out and dribble out the clock. Now the Black Bears get the job done again. They complete their third straight weekend sweep. Good sportsmanship there by Coach Vashon. They had an easy one, and she yelled at her player to bring it back out, not to rub it in, making that last basket. But, yeah, pretty impressive performance again by